Welcome, as always, to Sonata She Wrote. This is the channel where we mitigate your misaligned musings regarding the much maligned and misunderstood medial caesura. This is the third in a series of videos about the individual building blocks of sonata form in Hepikoski and Darcy's book, The Elements of Sonata Theory. I am releasing it first because the medial caesura is one of the aspects of this style of analysis that is more unique to it, and, if you can believe it, even hotly debated. So what exactly is a medial caesura? The medial caesura is a brief, rhetorically reinforced break or gap that serves to divide an exposition into two parts. Now, in a very give a mouse a cookie kind of way, you're no doubt wondering what a two-part exposition is, but that is much simpler. A two-part exposition is one with both a primary theme and a secondary theme, with a medial zesura in between them, as you can see in the timeline on screen. The Mozart sonata we analyzed was a two-part exposition. Although there are also one-part expositions, and the more uncommon trimodular block, an exposition with three parts and two medial caesuras, as in Haydn's La Renne Symphony, the two-part exposition is the most default option for sonata forms, and by far the most common. Now, I don't know about you, but for me it's much easier to discuss this with a piece of music in mind. So let's hear a little bit of K545, and then discuss some of the typical characteristics of a medial caesura, or as I often say, an MC. On page 30 of the Elements of Sonata Theory, Hepikoski describes four steps leading up to the MC. First, we have a transition, often gaining energy as it goes along, which we can see here in 545. Although the harmonic rhythm is more or less the same, certainly the notated rhythms are faster. Second, attaining a structural dominant by means of a half cadence arrival. This will typically be in either the tonic and marked 1HCMC, meaning a half cadence in the tonic key, or a 5HCMC, meaning that the transition has modulated to the new key of the dominant or median, if we're in a minor mode sonata, and is presenting a half cadence in the new key. K545's transition does not modulate, so we have the first option here, a 1HCMC. Typically, a medial caesura will be a half cadence of some kind, whether that's in the tonic, median, dominant, or even a different tonal area. Medial caesuras that are PACs in any key are not impossible, but they are very rare and certainly cause for investigation. Third, the prolongation of this still active V chord with a rhetorical drive to the MC. In 545, Mozart increases the rhythmic energy and even adds a very slight dissonance with the use of 564 chords. 564 is how I notate a cadential second inversion passage, which is a common pre-cadential gesture that a composer of this period would have considered a dissonance. Fourth, and finally, the articulation of the actual caesura. Here, we can see that the caesura is indicated by a rest before the secondary theme enters in the dominant G major. Will every medial caesura include all four of these steps? No, <laughs> not by a long shot. But if a composer chooses to deform the typical approach to a medial caesura, we view that as a deliberate choice that likely has meaningful expressive consequences. Now that we understand what a medial caesura is, let's discuss some common deformations of the medial caesura. This includes caesura fill and MC rejected. Caesura fill, now on page 40 of the elements, is described as the technique of implying a caesura, but filling it in with a brief sonic link in one or more voices. This sound, though obviously not silence, does complete the expressive goal of the medial caesura, that of energy loss, which links the often rambunctious transition to the low intensity beginning of the secondary theme. Let's hear the end of the transition, 
the Caesarophil, and the beginning of the S theme in Haydn's 100th symphony, nicknamed Military. In this symphony, we have three of the normative aspects of a medial caesura. There's energy, a half cadence in the dominant of D major, and a lock on that dominant from bar 68 onwards. However, we are missing the fourth, an actual articulation of silence. There is a high A in the flute, which is joined by the oboes in bar 74. Caesura fill is a fairly common deformation of a sonata's layout, but should still be approached as outside the norm. A second common deformation is medial caesura declined. In this case, many of the prerequisites for an MC are presented, but the music declines this effort, typically continuing on with the P theme or the transition. The music then reopens a more satisfactory medial caesura later. Mozart's G minor symphony is a good example of this phenomenon. Let's listen to the first potential MC. So far, we have some slight energy gain, a half cadence, and a dominant lock right here. Although there is no articulation of silence, we do have caesura fill in the bassoons. The P theme, correctly in my opinion, indicates that this is not a strong enough medial caesura, however, and quickly re-enters before the bassoons have even finished this gesture. This continues until a much more satisfactory MC is reached. Finally, the music accepts this new MC. We've modulated to the median key, a typical tonal strategy for minor mode sonatas. There's much more noticeable energy gain and a half cadence in this new key with a dominant lock. Even caesura fill is absent and we're given a grand pause, after which the S theme enters. Some final words of wisdom from Hepikoski and Darcy. When beginning the analysis of any exposition, we recommend the first task be to locate and identify the treatment of the medial caesura. Determine if one exists at all and investigate what kind it is, where it falls in the exposition, what complications surround it, and whether it leads to an acceptable secondary theme. One final reminder for myself, this video is only an overview of the medial caesura. Many variations are possible and I want to emphasize if a composer is altering the medial caesura in some way, it is not that they don't know how or don't possess the skill needed to create a standard medial caesura. It's that they are breaking from this normative practice for an expressive reason. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below.